With more and more cameras taking advantage of Canon's RF mount, one product that people have been crying out for are adapters for EF and PL that feature ND systems in the adapter. And there are now a few of these on the market. And today, we're going to take a look at three different options at three different price points, compare them, and see which one might be best for you. The key cameras that these adapters are aimed at are Canon's RF mount cameras, such as the R5C, R5 and R6, as well as RED's Komodo and V-Raptor. None of these cameras feature internal NDs, so for anyone shooting video, getting an ND system around them is pretty crucial. On the more affordable end of the systems, we have the Mica drop-in filter adapter. This adapter costs just under £140 and comes with a 1.5 to 9 stop variable ND filter. Our middle option is Canon's drop-in filter adapter, costing just under £400. This also comes with a 1.5 to 9 stop variable ND filter. Lastly, on the high end, we have Kipatai's revolver system. This is available in both EF and PL mount, and unlike the two previous adapters, uses a filter cartridge wheel which can be purchased with the revolver system or separately. The mount itself costs £1,080, and cartridges start at £480 depending on if you want them geared or not. So it is a much more expensive system than the other two, but it certainly has its benefits. There are also the adapters from Breakthrough Photography and Kalari, but we haven't got any of these to throw into the test unfortunately. I've seen plenty of people raving about the performance of the Breakthrough Adapter. Of course, you don't have to use a rear-mounted ND system. You can just use a regular front-mounted screw-on filter or matte box system, but a rear-mounted filter system has its benefits over these. Having a system behind your lens means swaps are much faster as you don't have to move your matte box out of the way. You just simply swap lenses. This also means for screw-on filter users, you won't need to deal with step-up rings or having to pay for multiple filters for multiple lenses when dealing with different front diameters. Rear-mounted filters also don't suffer from magnification issues that front-mounted filters will. It also reduces the overall weight and size of your rig, which also makes your rig less front-heavy, which could be a big plus for people running their systems on gimbals or in a shoulder configuration. It also reduces the risk of damaging filters on the front of your lens, but this does mean without an optical clear, you are running the risk of damaging your lens's front element. It also gives people the option, if they want to still use a matte box, to stack more filters without worrying about having an ND or polarizer taking up space in your matte box. Of course, the main downside to this is you can't use RF mount lenses, and this is why people are crying out for Canon and RED to put NDs inside their cameras. Right, let's take a look at the adapters physically and how they operate. Both the Canon and the Mica adapter use a little scroll wheel on the side of the adapter to control the level of ND. This unfortunately means that there is no exact way of knowing exactly the ND level that you have selected, just the low, mid and max marks on the dials. Both the Canon and Mica dials feel pretty similar, quite cheaply built but fast to operate. I think for video users, a smoother and more precise dial would have been much, much better. I wish they had a bit more resistance so you could get a bit more granular with your strength selection. However, like I said, the benefit of the current setup is that they are fast to operate. You can very quickly go from the minimum strength to the maximum. As we mentioned, the Kipatai uses a filter wheel that uses full spectrum single strength NDs over a variable ND system. All you do is slide the cartridge into the gap here and lock it in place using the screw and you're ready to shoot. This screw locks the filter in place, so if you want to change to a different one in the cartridge, you will need to unlock it or just shoot with it loose. To switch between different strengths of ND here, all you have to do is just turn the wheel. As this isn't a variable ND, on camera this will look similar to the systems used on Canon and Arri cinema cameras, where you can see the cartridge moving the filters over the frame. There are also geared versions of the cartridges available if you want to integrate it into a fizz system and control ND remotely. You can clearly see the ND strength you are using on the marks here, on the regular cartridges. However, on the geared version, strengths are marked as coloured notches on the gears, with the lowest being one notch and the highest being four. While switching between cartridges isn't ideal for some productions, this is a trade-off to gain some other benefits. One of them is knowing the exact amount of ND you are dialing in, and this will be much better for productions where you want to keep track of your exposure settings than the other two adapters. The Canon, Mica and Breakthrough Photography systems all use the same drop-in filter system. This means you'll be able to use all of these filters across these systems. This is great as it means you have loads of options to choose from no matter what filter you want to use. Canon create three different filters for their system, a clear, polarizer and the variable ND it comes with. 
The clear filter is needed with the Canon system if you want to use the adapter with autofocus. And it's actually quite pricey at £120. This clear filter is actually a piece of glass though. It isn't just a filter holder with nothing in it. This is so back focus isn't massively affected. We will explain and explore this in a bit though. The micro adapter comes with the clear filter in the box, which is similar to Canon's clear, which is nice considering its price point. Micro will also be producing a range of different filters, such as a polarizer, which is almost a quarter of the price of the Canon option. We didn't get a chance to check that out, but they did send us two black mists, a quarter and an eighth, which actually look really nice, and if priced the same as their other filters, will be roughly £55 a piece, which is excellent value. Breakthrough also makes a huge range of filters, which you can check out via the link in the description. The Kipatai Revolver offers three different ND cartridges. Each cartridge has four filters in, and each different cartridge will have a different combination of ND strengths. The biggest ND range you can get here is with the S cartridge, which has a clear 0.6, 1.2 and 2.1 ND, which is roughly seven stops of ND. They also offer a diffusion filter, which consists of a clear, as well as gold, pearl and carbon diffusion filters. All of the little details around the adapters is one thing, but how do the actual ND filters perform? Well, before we get into the tests, it's worth noting that variable NDs do have their downsides over your regular single strength ND filters. This is that they can suffer from color shift, vignetting or cross polarization artifacts, as well as just worse resolving power in comparison to single strength NDs. So let's dive into some tests and see how each of these performs. We have also included a Revo Ring VND as a front mounted option purely for comparative purposes. For our chart tests, we use a straight pass through RF to EF adapter and our Otis 55mm as our standard setup. We then use the revolver at 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 1.2, and 2.1's worth of ND first so we can match exposure with the other systems of the different steps of ND in the revolver using the R5's built in histogram. This is because of the fact that the other ND adapters don't have clear indicated stops, just low, medium and high on their dials. Looking at each adapter's rendering performance in comparison to a straight pass through adapter, we can see a bit of fall off in performance across them all throughout their ranges. They all perform really well in this regard, with the revolver probably edging it out slightly. When it comes to coverage or vignetting, I wanted to see if using the adapters at different ND strengths affects the light coverage across your sensor. All of them cover the R5 we use to capture these stills really well with minimal light loss across all of the adapters. And any light loss we see here isn't coverage, it's because of cross polarization. As variable NDs use two polarized pieces of glass to achieve their variable ND goodness, this means that every single one of them is susceptible to cross polarization artifacts. Regular NDs only use a single piece of glass, so will not suffer from this issue. So let's take a look at our variable NDs and how they all perform. First off, because the revolver is using single pieces of glass for its ND filters, you will not suffer from this artifact. However, with the Canon at its maximum usable ND point, we can see a little bit of a change in exposure across its frame, which is a very subtle polarization issue. When we look at the Revo ring, we can see quite a strong artifact from around 1.8 but it is incredibly pronounced at the maximum. We can also see a few artifacts at the maximum ND on the Mica ND, but performance is great up to the maximum point. Color casts are one of the biggest things to look out for when evaluating an ND, as poor quality ones will often add unwanted shifts to your image. For this, we shot our general camera test chart and some shots of our light box, which will show this off really well. For these, I white balance from the shot using a Canon straight pass through adapter, and then applied the same white balance and tint adjustment to the raw images in Lightroom, so any deviation from this is the adapter doing so. Starting with the revolver, it does a fantastic job at being incredibly consistent across the ND range that we tested with very minimal color shifts throughout the range. The Canon ND does well up to around 2.1 in its range where we can see a clear blue color shift and as we hit the end of its range, we can really see it shift massively. The Revo ring definitely has a slightly more warm shift throughout its range, but at its maximum, it shifts all over the place. So it makes it pretty much unusable here. The Mica adapter also shifts a little warm throughout its range, but doesn't have a massive color shift at its maximum like the Canon or the Revo ring, which is great but it does mean you don't have quite as much stopping power. But I would rather that than have the unusable footage because it's shifted so massively like the other two. The good thing about the Mica is that it's consistent. 
It is warm overall, but at least you can white balance once and still shoot throughout the entire range without worrying too much about your white balance being massively off. However, with each of these solutions, you should at a minimum be white balancing when you first put the ND on. But with massive shifts in white balance possible, I would suggest white balancing as much as possible, but especially when shooting a compressed format that won't let you change white balance in post. When using lens adapters, you can experience different flaring, which can be different from adapter to adapter, due to the changes in tolerances and design. However, variable ND adapters will also flare differently due to the ND inside the adapters too. For this test, we wanted to visually show how each adapter flares using our Otis 55mm and our 600D Pro pointing down the barrel. So here are some quick visual tests of each adapter. One of the largest things people complain about with the Canon adapter is that the clear filter, which is an extra £120, is needed for autofocus to work with the adapter. I believe this is because Canon has designed the adapter to have this clear filter or the ND in it so your back focus is more consistent with what it should be. Without a filter in any of the adapters, your back focus will be out. And that's completely normal if the adapter has been designed around using a filter at all times, which they all should be. However, we wanted to check just how out the different adapters are from the flange depth of EF, which is 44 millimeters. So for this, we used our DENS tool, which allows us to see how many microns out the adapter is with our red V-Raptors RF mount. Looking at the results, we can see that each adapter is only out by a few microns, so you should have little trouble hitting your marks or infinity when using them. Just for illustrative purposes, this is what this tool looks like when you remove the filter from the Canon adapter. As you can see, it completely throws the back focus out, and as we said, you should never use these adapters without a filter in them. The adapters range a bit when it comes to their build quality, but the Mica and Canon adapters feel pretty similarly put together. But there are subtle differences, such as the internal matting for reducing internal reflections. It looks a bit shinier in the Mica than on the Canon, and this will change how the adapters handle flaring. The mechanism for sliding the filter into place feel pretty similar, they both feel secure when you slide a filter in and they aren't easy to shake out. They both have a nice click when you enter a filter to assure you that it is seated correctly. Both of the adapters feel decently solid when you mount them onto a camera and a lens. But I would say mounting a lens onto the Canon is slightly smoother than the Mica. And this could be because the tolerances on the Canon are slightly better. Both also feature a nice gasket around the camera mount end. When mounted, they both exhibit the same amount of wiggle in the mount, which isn't surprising, and one of the big downsides of these systems over something like the revolver. Overall, I would say they are both built to the same good standard in slightly different ways. The Kipatai, however, puts them both to shame. It's incredibly well put together. It really feels like a product that is rental ready, but I guess this is reflected in the price. Another factor to consider about these systems is how they integrate into your camera rig and how they behave while operating. With the Canon and micro adapters being aimed more at the lower end of the video and stills market, they don't necessarily lend themselves to a video or cinema rig. First off, the mounts used are just your box standard stills lens mounts. This means that depending on your copy, there will be play in the mount, so when you zoom or focus, you will see a shift in the video. Now, this isn't an issue with photography, as you are only taking a single frame, so you will not see this play in the mount, whereas the Kipatai uses a locking EF or PL system. This means that lenses are incredibly secure in the mount and play is massively reduced. While this system will make lens swaps more time consuming, it will remove the wiggle that these other mounts suffer from, which will be a big plus for people capturing moving image. You also have to think about the mount the adapter is going onto. The adapters going onto a non-locking RF mount will suffer from some play in the mount. However, having an ecosystem around that can help reduce this. Unfortunately, the Canon and micro adapters do not have any mounting points to get a support system onto them, whereas the Revolver has accessories from Kipatai and other brands to lock the adapter down when being used with a regular RF mount, such as the Red Komodo, which has the chin strap from Kipatai to lock the adapter down. So in conclusion, the Kipatai is the adapter to go for if you're wanting the best quality NDs and integration with your video or cinematography camera package. But don't mind the turret style system when changing NDs. 
It's a product with a clear demographic in mind and the design and quality is something that unfortunately commands a high price tag. Whether this is out of reach for you will depend on the camera system you're wanting to use it with. For those investing in a Komodo or a V-Raptor, the cost may not be quite as substantial as people buying into a Canon mirrorless camera system. So if you want something a bit more affordable, I actually think the Mica offers the best bang for buck currently, with really good performance, no massive blue tint at its heavier stops, and a more consistent white balance throughout its range. RED will also be releasing their own PL variable ND mount, which hasn't had a release date yet, but has had support for iData confirmed, which makes it a really unique option on the market and a must have for people who need data in their workflow. It would be awesome to see ND control on the camera with this as well, but we'll have to wait and see what RED do with this. Let us know what you think of these adapters down in the comments below. And if you like the video, please give it a like and maybe even consider subscribing so you don't miss out on our awesome upcoming content. And thank you so much for watching.